Hey, so. Whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, clear out the room, I'm coming through. They want to see what I'm about. So, welcome to the channel. Today is a bit of a different episode. We are going on a ferry. We're going to take the car on a ferry over to the Isle of Wight, where we have two potentially unbelievable deals. And they're f huge. So, we've got a 25 bed hotel which we will convert to an HMO and then there's loads of potentials in there um, as well as hopefully a party before we do convert it um, and then the main one I'm really excited about is a 13 bed it's a 10 bed HMO already licensed with a three bedroom um, owner's accommodation we're just going to run it as a 13 bed HMO um, we've already got the investor who's actually here today who will look to joint venture on that deal um, and the numbers just look crazy so hopefully our lease provider can give us the green light. We've just submitted it today. Hopefully they'll give us the green light on that and then we can get the thing bought. But um, just wanted to bring the camera along with us today and do a little, it's not an average, to be honest. I mostly sit on the sofa and do a little bit of work. Um, this is, I'll try and get out and do a day uh, once a week maybe, sometimes once every two. So I just wanted to sort of bring you out um, with us and view some of these very cool properties, very exciting, very scary. Um, and we've got to get the car onto a big ferry, hopefully on time and back in time. Um, I'll be extremely ecstatic if we manage to pull this off. Um, it's something's gonna go wrong. Bloody heck, I'm nervous. Two houses to view. One we're really late for. Um, I said this wouldn't go to plan. Um, so it's a weird house. It's ten bedrooms, all en suite. No, not all en suite. It's ten bedroom HMO, all with kitchenettes in, but shared bathrooms, which is really odd. So we're going to have to quote up the works for adding bathrooms in every one. So they're all self-contained mini studios. And then there's a three bedroom apartment like linked to it. So we'll just use that as rooms as well. Um, or potentially a family a social. Mm -hmm. um, and then if we actually get in that one in time, um, that's the one I really want. Because the end valuation based on the income we get from it doubles its price. Um, so that's really exciting. The second one is, a, is massive. It's a 25 bed hotel. Um, the numbers work just off of the, those 25 rooms. And then you've obviously got the ground floor, which is like bar and um, empty area, which we could go to planning and get planning for more rooms. There's also a load of redundant spaces like laundry and um, office space and stuff that we obviously don't need. Um, there's an outdoor area, there's a huge car park, there's tons. Um, and, the, and the numbers still work off of just the 25 rooms, so we'll see how we go. The main focus is the first one, the, the 13 bed. We know that works on the numbers. Oh, okay, yeah. um, we've already put that through to the social housing um, company, so they'll go to the local authority and see if they're open to it. A hotel is, a, is an HMO, ultimately. It's gonna have all the fire rigs in there, it's gonna have all the fire alarms, it's probably gonna have a lift, maybe, I don't know. Um, okay. All of that stuff would have been thought about in terms of the fire rigs. Um, the difference is, is hotel short term, HMO long term. So, considering the Isle of Wight has such a large amount of redundant, empty hotels that just aren't being used, probably because Airbnb absolutely fucks it for everyone. Um, this is the house. It looks a little overgrown, but it's massive. All of that for a mere five hundred thousand pounds. So. This is one of the typical rooms, so they're big rooms, and they've got this massive kitchen in it, but the bathrooms are separate. So it's a little bit odd. So a typical room is this, with a big kitchenette, same as this one, big kitchenette, but then they've got the showers and the toilet separate. So I need to understand why that is firstly, because we want to put en suites in every single room, and then you've got 
a main bathroom, the kitchen diner, and then here's where it gets a little weird, is you've got the downstairs is the bedroom one for the apartment with stairs up to this bit. So you've got the bedroom, the sitting room, the kitchen diner. So, I mean, is that even, and then they got the third? So the flat's across two floors. Yeah, but it says it was a three bed flat, so now I'm confused. One, two. Oh, there we go, I'm being an idiot. So you've got bedroom one, two, three, and then the sitting room, kitchen, diner. So we'll just consider that as another three bed HMO, essentially. Mm. May even be able to, it may be a problem because of the stairs, but we may even be able to make a fourth if the kitchen diner is big enough um, to make that into a four bed. But we shall see. What made you go for the DIY? Cheap. Cheap. Opportunity, yeah. Is it? Considering it's in the south, to get a 13 bed for 500k and I suppose is a madness. Yeah. Social housing provider Social provider have just opened up there, so another thing is we'll be the only ones in that area. So no one else would have used our social housing provider in that area. Um, and it's one of the biggest social housing providers in the country. So it would be pretty cool to kind of almost try and have the Isle of Wight as our own space. And then if we get in with the agents, it means we can probably find rent to rent deals there and just purchase as many as we can find. Yeah, and eventually become the social housing island. Yeah, there you go. Kick out all of the people that are enjoying their holidays. The thing is, this is the problem with property, is you get all excited and you think that's perfect and then it's not. Um, yeah, I actually felt really bad. The, the lady, she, so she lives there, this lady lives in the three bed flat below um, with her two kids and she works, she's a carer. She works 48 hours a week um, and this house is old. It's like 1800s she was saying or something like that. Like and she just can't keep on top of it. She originally, I, I reckon she's widowed, is my initial thought, because she t spoke about her husband, but then didn't speak about him after. So she said that her and her husband had the next door, and then the bloke was selling the HMO part of it, um, in which they bought. And I think then what's probably happened, again, guessing, is he's passed away or whatever, and she's been left with it on her own, and just can't keep up with it. So I spoke about what we wanted to do in terms of social housing. She was really pleased, um, but the guys in there are just social tenants in the most basic form, if that makes sense. They are council tenants. They are just getting housing benefit from the council, so they need to be managed. There is no lease provider in place that does the maintenance and the bills and all that sort of stuff. So it's not really our model. Um, so she's just obviously a lovely lady who wants to help people um, and she's basically given them all a brand new one year AST so she as part of the the sale she she wants to, she wants to want she wants to stay in her flat for a year which you know that would be fine but she also wants all of the current tenants to remain for another year um, but she wants good money and she wants out ASAP but she's now kind of locked herself into a problem because nobody wants to inherit tenants at the best of times um, so I'd really like to help her but I just don't think there's going to be anything for us here I think it's going to be more pain and effort than it's worth he needs a lot more money than I predicted there's a massive crack which she reckons needs underpinning at 40 grand um, that's a problem. That's a big problem. Um, she's got a f really old, tired house between 
well there's 10 on HMO rooms they've all got kitchenettes they, they then share what was it three toilets and two bath and two showers mm. well, that's a problem so we'd we'd want to be putting en suites in to maximize the rents oh, I don't know I just don't think I just think it would be way too complicated to work I was trying to think of a way when someone has that much of a problem she can't afford anything she can't afford to have a void period she can't afford to pay the insurances properly like she can't afford it um, so I'm trying to think of a way in which I could take that problem off her hands but I think it's just gonna put the problem in our hands so on to the next one the next one is another problem um, it's now quarter past five I don't know if they do a rush hour in Isle of Wight, do they? <laughs> um, I don't think they rush anywhere. Um, but we've got a viewing at five, which we're already really late for. And we're how much later? It's probably another 10 minutes, isn't it? Yeah. 10 minutes away, we're getting there at half five, so half an hour late to the viewing. And then we've got to get back to the ferry. We're supposed to be at the ferry at 10 to, it's a 25 minute drive back. This is a bad idea, isn't it? So what do we do? I really want to see this hotel, I but want to see it as well. and I've just done about a hundred quid on a ferry. Well, considering how late the other one was, we might make it. I reckon they're all running late. I reckon we fly around it, go to the little we healing centre, look at the bar. Let's have let's just have a go. What's the worst that can happen? When we get stuck in the Isle of Wight. Yeah. <laughs> Bloody knew it. It looks massive and it's painted green. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god, that is horrendous. <laughs> is this empty then or what? Yes. Very much so. Well, I don't reckon Matey Boy's gonna be here, you know. Had a short time. It's got to be a quick one, yeah, I reckon. Mm. <laughs> well, I thought, well, if I need to show you, like, say, just more like, say, keys or rooms. Yeah. So, so you get like a good idea of, 100%. Like, of how things are. Brilliant. That was absolutely mental. It's so annoying because we have to speed round there. It has way too many bathrooms. Like everything is just nuts. You would have to for, for what we want to use it for, which is going to be long-term social hours in HMO. Um, in, term, in terms of actual space, the rooms are all massive and the pl even the smallest rooms have plenty, plenty of room for us to put little kitchenettes in there to make them all self-contained. So in terms of being fit for purpose for what we want, it is over and above, I think. Um, almost too much. It's almost a shame to put long-term tenants in there. Um, however, that is what we do, and the numbers will certainly work. There was actually, we saw a sign that said 32 rooms, 
and he said that they'd knocked a few together but I mean even on that ground floor there is just so much space for more rooms massive you could easily have that as 50 rooms I reckon yeah I don't know how you do that I mean, or how you'd split it whether you'd then want to I just don't know you've got laundry room games room which the game kitchen was about top, like three bedrooms right there the kitchen was ginormous the kitchen was massive they've got a wine cellar they've got I can't believe you can that get that property room? for that that money. How much is it? 900. 885. Um, which sounds obviously a lot, but you're talking 25 rooms slash 32 rooms, plus the outdoor bit where they filled in the pool. That could, you could easily put some some units out the back there, maybe some um, you know those like garden rooms that are, that are livinable. Um, you've got all that car parking around the edge which again is just redundant space for what we need it for. So, I mean, it would all come down, that those sorts of things are all planning issues. So, but we run the numbers on a 25 bed and they looked immense in terms of figures. So they're the perfect deals because you can run the numbers on the basic in terms of what it already is and then we'll just do a basic um, planning app to convert to HMO. There is every fire regulation you can imagine in there. Fluffy little intumescent strips, door closers, panels, everything, because it's a hotel and that's, they have to be the high, like one of the highest fire rigs there are. So that would be no problem. They've all got locks on doors, so that, again, problem solved. I can imagine we'd need to decorate the whole place, which would be eye-watering. Mm. 30 grand, more. 40 grand yeah. so the problem is what they've done in there everything is themed in the most brash colours you've ever seen in your life it's going to take two or three coats for every room and then you've got all those banisters stairs it's going to need re probably it was like a cross between 40 towers <laughs> the other thing it reminds me of do you remember the um, butler you used to lock in the fridge on Lara Croft <laughs> yeah <laughs> just like minces around yeah. like we, we kept saying to the poor blokes we're really late we have got like two minutes spare and we're supposed to be at the port half an hour before like the boat one more room and the one more room turned into literally ten more rooms with with a story to go with yeah. each one but absolutely amazing I'm all I'm thinking of I'm gonna pass it over to Kev to do the numbers and hope that we can make that work all I'm thinking of I'm purely focused on the pies so we're gonna have opening party, all sorts of parties to celebrate um, before we then convert it to a social housing. So that was worth it. If we get this boat, even more worth it, and then it's been a success. If we miss the boat, it's not the end of the world. It's gonna be like another 40 quid or something and we'll just get home an hour later, which is not okay, really. But we've got no choice. <laughs> yeah, always push your luck, ladies and gentlemen always bags of time thank you very much mission accomplished time we got to spend. it is due to leave right this second <laughs> i don't feel very smug so the summary of the day was that um one very one very good um yeah it was um the one i thought was going to be the best was literally the worst uh I'm really disappointing and i almost wanted to just go home and give up the second one was way better than i expected it's absolutely awesome we've just run some numbers as well and based on a commercial valuation come on son no okay based on a commercial valuation of um of the contract that we'll get in place. So for those who don't know, commercial valuation is when you get something like a commercial building. Um, they will value the property based on the income because it's a business rather than the bricks and mortar, which is you know what it's actually worth because a business is very difficult to value um, because normally on a bricks and mortar, you'd have to go like for like. So a three bedroom semi-detached, you could go down the road and find a similar one that sold recently. A 25 bedroom hotel, is all dependent on how it's been run and the income or the EBITDA. Um, so when we get a contract, the contract itself on this hotel would bump up the value without doing any work. 
So we've run some numbers. It's got 25 rooms currently. That's without us doing anything. They're all on suite bedrooms, all fire egged up. All we need to do is get a conversion to an HMO license. We've got bags of space on the ground floor that we could convert, but we're going worst case scenario. Our, t our standard room rate is 400 pounds a month, um, which gives us a 10 grand a month income, which would value the property at 1.284, I think, uh, million, which is, and we're buying that at 900K. So that's a huge uplift already. If we get the hybrid rate, which which requires us to put in small kitchenettes into all the ensuite rooms, making them small self-contained units, that would bump up the valuation to 1.9 something million, which is staggering. So the numbers work on the worst case scenario. The only downside, potential downsides that we have is number one, the lease provider doesn't take it on because it's a new area. Or number two, we don't get an HMO license for whatever reason. Now these are things that we can mitigate before we actually purchase. So we can do all this stuff ahead of time. We don't need to wait until we bought it to then go, it's gone. Hope you enjoyed that one. Bit of a different one, not a normal day in the life of a property investor. And also just goes to show how many houses you have to go and see and how much, I've spent a whole day today just trying to find uh, a property. So it shows you how, how much graft actually goes into trying to find these things. And that's before we've even tried to buy the thing. So. Hope you enjoyed that one. See you later. I saw. Whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, clear out the room, I'm coming through. They wanna see what I'm about. Yeah, I got skills, do it for the thrill. I'm on a paper route. Extra, extra, read about it. I'm today's trying to tap it. I put commas over bullshit.